Hello everyone, Holy Skills here and today is episode 5 of Bible Study with Snakes and we are joined with baby Taiju. He's a granite Burmese python. He's was just born this year. My Heiko Kiba here. He turned two in August. So he's a beautiful boy and he's, he's around four feet, maybe a little yeah, longer. Probably four feet. He's a longer boy. He is. And today we're going over how to overcome depression and anxiety with the word of God. Yes. And before we get into this video, put a little disclaimer. <laughs> Do not stop your medication. Just if you're on medication for anxiety or depression, don't just stop it. Wait till you are rooted and grounded in God's word and you know mm -hmm. for sure you feel called to stop your medication. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so we are going over the verses we stand on to overcome depression and anxiety. Me and Autumn, we both had depression and anxiety back in high school, in our high school days. Mm -hmm. And Autumn also had bipolar disorder. I did. So let's go ahead and share our a little bit of our testimonies before we hop into this. Okay. So for me, I was very depressed and anxious in school. I had anxiety so bad to where it was like hard for me to even eat sometimes. And my depression, I was just overwhelmed with school, with work, with um, family problems. Just, it would just, you know, whenever you're in high school and you just have all that, you're just focused on all of that negative negativity in the world and you will be depressed and anxious. Right. Yeah. Okay, let's hear a little bit about yours. Um, I'd say I was very easily irritated. Um, I, I think we've all been there at one point in time. <laughs> what? It's like one of the bigger symptoms of a bipolar disorder, I think. That's one of the ones that I dealt with the most was just like any little thing could just like send you over the edge. <laughs> and I had a hard time regulating my emotions. And I dealt a lot with anxiety and depression, but I would also have manic episodes where I just would not care about anything. Nothing bothered me, which, you know, could be problematic at times, but God has completely set me free from that. It's been so long that I really can't even remember having it because I think it's been like five years, but I do remember how horrible high school was and how hard it was for me. School can really take a toll on your mental health, especially whenever you're just surrounded by negativity. Um, and then also, Autumn was hearing. Oh yeah, things. I would also had a period of time in high school where I would hear things, I would see things that weren't there. Um, it was really creepy, it was really weird. I think it was definitely demonic, and God set me free from those things as well. How God is good. Yes, he is every day. Mm -hmm. Now, to overcome anxiety and depression with God's word, you have to really meditate on these scriptures. And I encourage you to write them down and really meditate on them. We're going to start off in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. And it's very important to just get really rooted and grounded in God's word. Build a firm foundation in his word and let God be more real to you than this than this world. Yes. And it says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you. In perfect peace. All whose thoughts are fixed on you. So keep your yeah. mind stayed upon the Lord. Don't stay focused on the things of this world, especially things that you can't change. Those are the things, the cares that you should be casting upon the Lord. Are the things that are out of your control if you keep your mind completely stayed upon god your entire mind stayed upon god you will experience a perfect peace mm -hmm. and you will know when you experience that because you will have peace in storms through trials through tribulations you will have just a perfect i would almost say an overwhelming peace like you're just like man i don't like all this stuff is going on but i'm just so right. at peace because you have your trust in god oh i'm still flipping off the camera <laughs> sorry guys um, disregard. <laughs> okay, now let's go ahead over to okay. Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. 
Okay, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. So, think about the things of heaven. Yeah. Now, what do you think about when you think of the things of heaven? Think Jesus sitting at the right hand side of God. And like, if you're like, man, nothing's going good for me right now. There's things going good for you and that are going to be going good for you in heaven. <laughs> so you have some I hope to look forward to. But you can have peace, love, and joy here and now in any circumstance. But I'm just saying, like, if you need something to focus on, focus on everything good that's going to be going on in heaven. There's this, not going to be any sicknesses, no diseases. So, everyone's going to be happy. The New Living Translation. I'm going to put the scripture up here. I can't yeah. say it off the top of my head, but... um. Life is like a vapor, and then the New Living Translation, I believe, calls it a morning fog. So it's very, this life is temporary it on is. this world, in this world, but eternity is forever. This is a short period of time. And when you put your trust yeah. in God, then you will have perfect peace, love, and joy in any circumstance, like Autumn said. Yeah. So even if people are being, saying negative things towards you, even if you're going through a hard time, when you have your trust in God, when you have your mind focused on God, when God is just your main focus, then you're going to have that peace, love, and joy. And I also say live in the now. Don't live in the past. Don't dwell in the past. Don't worry about the future. Just live in the present time. Just focus on your relationship with the Lord. Yes, and also when you're thinking about when you set your mind on the things above, you set your mind on what Jesus did for us on that cross. He mm -hmm. died not only to forgive our sins, but to yeah. also give us new life. And a restored relationship with God the Father. Yes, because through Adam, whenever Eve ate the fruit and Adam ate the fruit in the beginning, then there was separation from God. And Jesus restored that through what he did on the cross for us. Now Goodness let's go ahead today. over to First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. A little guy's hanging out right here, sitting on my shoulder. They eat today. He's, he's a little emotional. <laughs> Little guy, but he'll eat anyways. He, right. He's a berm. So, first Peter chapter 5, verse 7 Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. So, all your cares, all your anxieties, yes. give it to God. Nothing Don't keep them to yourself. God. God wants to help you, give them to Him. Mm -hmm. And whenever yep. you pray for God to take your anxieties and cares, believe yep. that He did because it's by faith, it's not by sight, not by feeling. And, and don't hold on to your cares and be like, well, you know, I did this to myself. You know, I don't deserve his help. No one deserves his help. <laughs> no one. God's love so, is unconditional for us. It's not yeah. by anything we do. God is not, not mad at you. If you'll ever make yeah. a mistake, God's not mad at you. He loves you. He wants you to come back to him. Mm -hmm. Never run from God. Always run to God. Right. And that's going to bring me over to Romans chapter 8 verse 6. Okay. And the King James says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And, oh, he's fallen. All right. So <laughs> letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death, but letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. Yeah, but I'm going to go ahead and use the King James version that says mm -hmm. carnally minded. What does it mean to be carnally minded? To be thinking in like the five senses, you know, yes, and this selfishness, self-centeredness. It's a big one. To be carnally minded, it means of the the five senses, the this physical realm, what you can see, taste, hear, smell, and feel. It's of the five senses. It's carnal. That's the physical realm is carnal. You have to get to where the spiritual realm is more real to you than this physical realm. And that is why a lot of it, like, say you have anxiety, there are times that you can command anxiety to leave. Like anxiety, I command you leave right now in Jesus name and it does leave but you have to get to a point where you whether you feel anxious or not you're going to act like you're not anxious because that act of faith will manifest into your feelings right all right now let's go ahead over to Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 33 we're going to go ahead and read about Peter walking on the water and how that relates to us. Okay. 
When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped. Oh, wait, hold on. Up to 22, he said. Yeah, 22 to 33. Let me scroll up. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land. For a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Then they climbed back into the boat. The wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. Okay, so Peter was walking on the water when his mind was stayed on Jesus. But as soon as he got his mind off God and onto the storm, so that could be our circumstances, um, the storm in our own lives, then he began to sink. We want to get to the place where we are rooted and grounded in God's word and our mind is just constantly on God. And that's an everyday thing, renewing your mind. And when I say renewing your mind, that's getting into God's word every day, spending time with God every day. That way we can prevent ourselves from sinking in the storm. Yeah. Now, does that mean you're never going to make a mistake? You're never going to, you know, have any more problems? No. no. <laughs> and what did yeah. Jesus do whenever Peter began to sink? He pulled him right back up out of there. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to go back to Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2. Okay. not setting your mind on the things above so whenever you have depression and anxiety the things that you're thinking about are negative and you want to get it to where you're focused on the positive words god's positive and words it's all stems from self-centeredness which i think we went over a couple bible studies ago but like whenever you're depressed it's like Oh, I can't believe this happened to me, right? If you're anxious, I'd be like, oh my gosh, what are they going to think about me, you know? So you have to be, just care more about other people, like, in God more than yourself. Prioritize God first in your life. Yeah, God so number one. To overcome that self-centeredness. We need to love God and love people. So whenever somebody, say before you... Okay, so um, let me think of how to put this in words. So instead of praying for people because they hurt your feelings, then now you're going to pray for people because you hurt for them. Because they, if they had any idea who they were in Christ, they wouldn't have treated you that way. Right. They're lost. We shouldn't be hurting by their words. We shouldn't be hurt by their words or their actions towards us. We should love them regardless of how they treat us that's right and pray for them like i said not because they hurt your feelings not because they did did you wrong but pray for them because you love them because they're lost yes. and they need jesus just as much as any of us do because some prayers aren't answered whenever they're prayed for wrong motives so if you're praying for somebody that you know treats you better so that your day goes better then that prayer's prayer is probably not going to be answered because it um stems from self-centered motives yes we as christians all need to get to a place where what god says about us should matter more than what people say about us yeah i would say like like if someone says something mean to you what's gonna hurt you more something that a stranger says or something that someone you know says you know somebody who you're friends with says so if you're really good friends with god you're gonna be like uh well i care about what he says about me more than what anyone else says about me yeah Versus some like random stranger like saying something negative towards you. And like we've said before, hurt people hurt people. So you should be praying for them. Their day probably is not going well. And um, they just need to know God more. They do. Or find the Lord. They don't have to. We need to pray with right motives. We're also going to do a 
Bible study on how to pray. Yeah, and let's see what else we have in here. Let's go ahead and go over to Matthew chapter 7 verses 24 through 27. And that's going to tell us a little bit about firm foundation. Okay. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock, though the rain comes in tor torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against the house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rain and floods come and the wind beats against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So we're not only listening to God's word, but we're obeying God's word. And we'll go ahead over a couple examples of that. So for worry and anxiety, like we said, cast your cares upon God. Mm -hmm. Really meditate on that. Really give God your cares and believe that he's taking your cares. Now for depression, set your mind on the things above. When you're depressed, you're thinking about all the negativity. You're thinking about what that person did to you. You're focused on all the negative yeah. things in your life. Even if everything seems like it's going wrong, it's not because God is always there with you. God loves you. Talk to God. He's there. He wants to spend time with you. He's your father. He He's wants a friend. relationship with you. Yes. And maybe you have fear. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, mm -hmm. but of power, love, and a sound mind. Right. Now... Does that mean you won't be tempted with anxiety, depression, and fear? No, you will be tempted. The enemy wants to get you off your mind off of God and onto the world because if you're more focused on the world, mm -hmm. then you're no longer a problem to him. Right, you have no threat to him. Yep. <laughs> if you're just, uh, I don't know. Yeah, no threat to him. So let God's word be more real to your feelings. Be more real to you than your feelings. So even if you're feeling depressed or feeling anxious, yes. change your focus, get your mind on God, spend time with God, whether that be in your room, maybe you're going on a, on a ride and mm -hmm. by yourself or something, wherever you are alone, that's your secret place with God. Talk to him, pray to him, fellowship with God, worship him. And I think also praise is a, a big thing when it, is it Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always? Yes, yeah. rejoice in the Lord always. And, and again, again, I say rejoice. rejoice. <laughs> yeah, it would have been, um, what is it? He wouldn't have given us that command if we wouldn't be able to do it, you know? So there's always something you can find to rejoice about, you know? Literally anything. Like, there's a new day. That's something to rejoice about. Your health is a big thing to rejoice about because a lot of people struggle with their health. New life in Christ. Yeah, new life in Christ. Uh, maybe this something to rejoice about is like, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not having an eternity in heaven with God the Father, which is good. Yep, the but Bible says to live also, is Christ and to die is gain. Yeah. Also remember, eternal life is knowing God the Father. So we can have like eternal life technically now, right? We do have eternal life. We have now. eternal life now. Fellowshipping with God the Father is, and knowing God is eternal life. Yes. And, um, it's beautiful. It's so pretty. Go over James chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have it written down, so okay. I'll read it here. This is the King James. Autumn Life's New Living Translation. We just kind of have a mix of both. You know, as long as you have a Bible, that's what matters. Right. It says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist mm -hmm. the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So if you submit yourself to God, that's resisting the devil. Mm -hmm. So if you're feeling tempted to be depressed, anxious, fearful, submit yourself to God, get your mind on his word, and the devil will flee from you. Yeah. And it says... When you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. So the more, the closer you get to God, the more time you spend with God, the closer he will become to you. It says, purify your hearts, you double-minded. So double-minded is whenever you are carnal and spirit, 
kind of like carnal and spiritual. So it's like saying you believe but acting otherwise. Yeah. Is what that double is. Double-minded. Yeah, double-minded. So you're saying... <laughs> you're saying you believe, but... Mm -hmm. oh, let's go ahead and use an example. So say you... Okay, say you're, you're like anxiety, leave in Jesus' name, and then you feel tempted to be anxious, and then you start acting anxious, and you start doubting, be like, man, it didn't work. That's you have to remember, yeah. like, faith without works is dead. You need to act, you know, not anxious. And then that faith um, and stuff, it will manifest, and then you will not be anxious anymore. Just don't claim that. Rebuke it. Um, and it, that's like with depression and stuff too. Don't lay in your room in the dark. Get up, go for a walk or something. You don't have to lay there and be like, oh, you know, dwelling on all the negative things and like be, find things to rejoice about. Go for a walk, listen to some Christian pop or something. <laughs> Lift your spirit. I really You'll like worship music because although I feel like a lot of times, there were a lot of times where I was like, I just don't want to mm -hmm. listen. I would rather listen to Christian pop or christian rap right. i don't want to listen to the worship but the worship is so much better just start listening yes. to it even if you don't want to and you will just feel so happy well, listening I, to it worshiping god i like christian pop too i feel like it's really good i think as long as the focus is just on god and not on like i don't care about what you think about me <laughs> then like that's what really matters just I keep the focus on god. music is another thing it Whenever you're depressed, what are you tuning into? What are you listening to? Mm -hmm. What are you watching? Right. How much time are you spending in the world rather than with God? Yeah. So, when you're listening to secular music, when you're listening to worldly music, not godly music, then that has a big influence on people. And you may not think so, but it really does. And that's the same with TV shows that aren't godly. For, yeah. For, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. If you're watching just a worldly movie or listening to worldly music in that movie you may say well it doesn't have that much bad stuff in it but it just takes a little bit yeah like what's that one i forget who said it just a little bit of poop <laughs> okay yeah there was yeah. this guy and his kids wanted to watch a movie and it had some bad and stuff in it just a little bit and then he made his kids some brownies and was like it just has a little bit of dog poop in it <laughs> Are you going to eat the dog poop brownie? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> yeah. So don't watch stuff that could just influence you otherwise. Right. I mean, we've watched some animes. Oh. And I guess that's kind of like, you know, okay. some dog poop brownies. It is. But whenever you're watching that stuff, make sure you're spending more time with God than that. So mm -hmm. not watching, binge watching a whole season. Just watching like an yeah. episode a week or something like that. Right. Um, I'm going to go to Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 and 7. I also have that written okay. down. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in faith, as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So we are called to walk. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You're okay. So we're going to walk like jesus we can walk like jesus because we received him we have new life through him we're to live like jesus did rooted and built up in him and established in faith so that was goes back to what we were saying about meditating on god's word really spending time in god's word mm -hmm. and i also want to use an example of apostle paul whenever he was in prison and he rejoiced in the lord isn't that when he wrote that scripture rejoice in the lord always i believe yeah sure. but apostle paul was in prison and he rejoiced in the lord yeah. and i know a lot of people will be like well that's just not possible for us yeah. it's possible yeah. but if you don't believe it's possible then it's not going to be possible for you it's not going to work for you if you don't believe that you can act by faith and not by feelings then it's not going to work for you Right. You have to really let God's word be more real to you than your feelings. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is going to wrap up 
today's video. I'm not sure what we're gonna talk about next week, but it's just we could do how to better way to pray. Or yeah, we could do a better way to pray. Well, Andromic has a series called A Better Way to Pray. We'll just which is pretty much, you know, where we learned. Yeah, if you guys want to watch some awesome ministers, yeah. if you're you've been looking for some people just online to watch, we really like Andrew Womack, Dan Moeller, and Todd White. Mm -hmm. They all preach about faith healing, faith healing, new life pray. in Christ. Yeah, really. The good. old man is dead. The new man, really powerful, is here. Put on, put off the old man. Put on the new man. Right. We have new life. Don't, don't we're stay new in creations in Christ. We're not old sinners saved by grace, guys. We are yeah. new. New. And we hope you all have a uh, great day. Mm -hmm. And we hope you join us for next week's Bible study. Bye. Bye.